is a cricketing legend whose test match career saw him dominate the field for almost two decades. Well, now, Geoffrey Boycott, often dubbed the greatest living Yorkshireman, is known for being an outspoken but respected commentator of the sport and joins us now live from West Yorkshire. Good morning to you, Geoffrey. Morning. First of all, how are you? Pretty good, actually, yes. Mm -hmm. Health good? Very good. Yeah, I had to have my heart started again about a few weeks ago. That's annoying because you're tired for a long time, but I, it seems to have worked. It's the <laughs> second time I've had it done and I'm doing good. Good, but well, it's great it's to see you. certainly and you're, and appears to be working this morning. No, I, I hope you're coming off a long run here, Geoffrey. We, we need some plain Yorkshire speaking about the leadership contest right. and in particular about Boris Johnson. Mm. What is your view of him? I don't know. I've never met him. I, I don't really want to know about his personal life. We, look, we've all had personal problems. We all have them now. I mean, if you looked into my life or looked into Susanna's, my goodness, I bet it'd be quite interesting. So I want to know about Brexit. I want to know... Hang on, how do I, I want to know... get drawn into it? I'm not running for Prime Minister. <laughs> Well, yes, and so people like us in the public eye, we have to accept that. If our life is examined, we have to accept it, it's part of what we are, so we're examining Boris's. But most people are fed up with Brexit. We're fed up, it's gone on forever. We just want to go now. I think there's more and more people want to go and want to get out of the European Union. And I just would like somebody who's unambiguous about we're going, and that's what Boris says. And if he delivers that, that's fine. The other guy, Jeremy Hunt, I don't know him. I listened to him this morning. I've heard what he has to say. And I thought uh, Susanna got it right. They're both a bit slippery, and so is he. He talks about a good game, about, oh, he's going to find us another deal, a better deal. Well, he's been in the Cabinet mm. as Foreign Secretary over a year, nearly a year. And why hasn't we got a deal done? We haven't got a deal done because the Prime Minister tried like hell and Europe don't want us to have a good deal. They want us to fail. If we succeed as a country outside the EU, then other countries will yeah. want to leave, the European Union will break up, they won't have their great jobs with wonderful fees, unlimited expenses, they'll have all the power travelling and looked after around Europe and the world, all that will disappear. And so, no, they don't want us to succeed. Why don't we get that into our heads? Mm -hmm. and? This guy Hunt coming on and saying that he's going to talk a good deal. As Foreign Secretary, he's met all the heads of state in Europe. He knows them all very well. He go talk to them. They've already said, I heard Susanna say this morning, they've already said they're not going to change. There's no more deals to be done. You accept what's on the table or go. And yet he's telling us he's a Remainer. He's always been a Remainer. He's not going to change now. He thinks that Great Britain... The United Kingdom, we as a people, if we don't have a deal with Europe, then we'll collapse. It'll be terrible. No, it won't. We fought two world wars and we came out on top. Why? Because of the spirit and determination of the British people. That's what the British people do. That water around our island has saved us from all kinds of things throughout history because we're a strong people. We'll survive. We've got India queuing up to do deals. We've got America, our best friend, queuing up to do a deal. And there's plenty of others. We haven't even talked about China, 1.3 billion. So let's hang on. We're not totally dependent on 300 million people in Europe. Geoffrey, that's one of the greatest mission statements I've heard, probably since the era of Churchill. <clears throat> Fancy running for Prime Minister? Right. I'm not a politician. You should be. Honestly, you spoke I'm too with... old, love. I'm too old for you. That's the problem, Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not so sure about that, Geoffrey. She, she's quite partial to the older man. What's <laughs> going on? Oh, I shall have to look into her past. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you're fascinated with what I've been up to. <laughs> Are you a bit of a fan, of, a fan well... of Susanna, Geoffrey? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, when I come in, I'm coming for lunch. <laughs> When I come in, I want to have lunch with her. OK, right. brilliant. Can I just let you down slightly, Jeffrey Boycott? I know nothing about cricket. Absolutely nothing. So I Jeffrey will I tell you. I will be talking cricket with you, Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Jeffrey, let's try and steer you back to safer waters. Uh, the, the Cricket World Cup. 
Uh, yeah. Suddenly it's come, it's come to life a bit. Yeah. England suddenly lost when no one expected them to. Very dramatic game with the West Indies the other night. South Africa have, have choked and they're yeah. going home. Um, what do you make of the tournament so far? And do you still think that England are favourites to win? Yes. <laughs> but uh, I always said before the tournament, you could, you could afford to lose two matches. I didn't expect them to lose to Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Yeah, so they're going to have to play well. No talking. Talking doesn't win World Cups. You've now got to perform. And the big problem with them, they play one way, one dimensional. They attack gung-ho and they've been very successful with it. But as you know at cricket, a square on a, on a cricket field is only so big. And you have to get a lot of pitches out of that for county cricket, international one day, test matches. And sometimes... You have to reuse one that's been used weeks ago. The groundsman makes it, you know, prepares it. And when you get a use pitch, it isn't perfect. It doesn't come on perfect. It just stops a little. It's still good, but not quite as good. And they don't think very well. That's the problem with them. They lost to Pakistan two years ago in one of those, a use pitch at Cardiff, when they were the best side and should have won the Champions Trophy. On paper, they're the best side now. They're covered in all departments, fast bowling, seamers, two types of spin, long batting order. But, you know, when you play cricket, a thinking cricketer is a better cricketer. In well, your Jeffrey, case, I could... Use your brain. Jeffrey, I could talk to you about all this for a very long time. I've got to warn you, Susanna, mm. it's probably not the best lunch pitch you've ever no. made, this. No. That's talking about pitches. But I think you and Piers will have an absolutely <laughs> lovely lunch. Jeffrey <laughs> uh, Boycott, lovely to talk to you. Let Thank me ask you. one last question oh, for Jeffrey, yeah. if you can hear me. Uh, the big yeah. one this year is the Ashes. You know, I could see England may or may not win the World yes. Cup, but the Ashes, I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. I think the Aussies are going to come very hard at us. I think Warner and Smith in particular are looking like they are bang up for the fight, having been brought back from uh, the abyss. What do you make of the Ashes' chances? Very quickly, Geoffrey. Close. Geoffrey Arch is a big plus for us. He's quick, he's good. Big problem for England, the top three. They're so poor, I'm thinking of putting my pads on again and practising. <laughs> Geoffrey, I would love you to put your pads on and be Prime Minister and basically run the country, run the England <laughs> top order. I think we'd be in a much better position. It's always great to talk to you. Please come back on again very can soon. Can I say one thing? You can. But he is. Yep. Can I say one thing quickly? Mm. Yep. Theresa May is going as Prime Minister. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, she's a good person. She tried to please everybody. She tried to please... The Remainers by getting a deal in Europe and she tried to leave and please the Brexit made people. And as Abraham Lincoln said, you can't please all of the people all of the time, yeah. unfortunately. Very true, Geoffrey, and thank God you don't either because I think straight talking is what is needed and leadership. And you've made that point very forcefully. Great to talk yes. to you, Geoffrey, and uh, look forward to seeing you this summer, hopefully.